You're looking, you're looking fit today. You know what? <laughs> you are. I was trying to come up with something clever. Am I looking fit? You are looking Maybe fit. Maybe you was. You know, you know, it's funny looking at the two of us. There's a clear distinction of fitness levels, which is yeah. not a bad thing. No, but I think I, different goals. Different goals, yeah, yeah. Which I think is a perfect, a perfect intro into our topic for today. And what's that? Lifestyle. Lifestyle. CrossFit lifestyle. So, oh. most people that have been doing CrossFit for a short period of time think about it as you know tough workouts, shoe addiction. Mm-hmm loud music right right and they may hear rumblings of you know the crossfit lifestyle and i think that's something that is important to to discuss as we get into this topic of lifestyle uh inside and outside of the gym you know uh whether it be physical mental however you want to look at it you know we need to break down uh, a few things what kind of athlete am i what am I doing outside of the gym to obtain those goals or what I want to look like or feel like? And what am I doing inside the gym to obtain those goals? But I think those are some big topics that I think it go it circle around people's minds a lot, especially when they feel defeated, uh, when they have bad days. We need to take a look outside of that hour long class and look at what, you know, maybe there's something on the outside that we're not getting. I think appearance is focused on too much. Yes. Um, I was a big fan of what Laura Horvath said um, after she won Rogue, where you know, she mentioned never seeing the Barbie movie that was popular. Yeah. And that she was more focused on what she, her body's capable of doing more than what it looks like. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's a really good point. And, you know, I, I jokingly brought up, you know, you, your fitness and my, you know, the look. Mm-hmm. But if we break down our lifestyle, training style, our goals, then when you look at the two of us, it makes sense. Right. You know, at one point, you and I were workout partners. Right. We we trained every morning. We worked out together religiously. And in those, you know, this last seven years, number one, our age difference yep. is starting yep. to show a little bit more. I'm, you know, I'm pushing close to 40. Yeah. And you're still in your early 30s. Right. You're still actively working towards competing right. at the higher level. Right. And so your training matches that. Right. Versus I'm in a clinic full time, yep. coaching, and I work out, you know, I do that one hour a day. Right. So I think that's, you know, a, a big point is when, when we're looking at certain bodies, that phenotype, you're like, man, I really want to, I want to look like that. Right. Or even if your mindset's beyond that, it's like, I want to perform like that. You know, what does that realistically look like? Yeah, you know, social media is such a big part of our lives nowadays. Whether you like it or think it or not, social media is a huge part of, of you know, who we are as humans, yeah. right? And unfortunately, what we see on social media is a lot of the good stuff. Uh, we see the pro athletes, you know, the Rich Fronings, the Chandler Smiths of the CrossFit world or, you know, the, the C-bums of the bodybuilding world, right? And we're like, I want to look like that. And I think we get these unrealistic expectations and it, it starts to put us down yeah. mentally because we're not we're not hitting those goals. But there's reasons they look like that and they perform like that. And like you, you hit on it earlier, that's their job. Yeah. Right? You're not getting paid to come to an hour long class and go compete at the CrossFit games. Right. You have a full time job, you have a life outside of the gym. They have chosen that life. And I think that's what we need to separate ourselves from is idolizing these people on social media by the way they look and the way they perform and just understand that that is an unattainable um, unobtainable goal. Unless you're in that same lifestyle. Exactly, unless you're living that lifestyle. So let's touch on how do we decide what kind of athlete we want to be. Everybody's an athlete. Everybody's an athlete. athlete. And, And the way CrossFit defines this paradigm is there's sickness, there's wellness and then there's fitness yes. so the opposite of sickness is not wellness the opposite of sickness is fitness right so if we just stopped it being well then we're not maximizing our life you know our performance in life and, right. and in our physical activity so if you really dial in you know your goals and say okay well i'm an athlete mm-hmm. and i'm accepting that because i'm doing athletic endeavors exactly and say, okay, what goals do I have for myself? Yep. And then we think about from that point, is the back end setting me up for that goal? And right. then if we say, okay, I, I, I want to be fit and I want to be healthy, mm-hmm. 
and active for my kids and to be able to do the things that I want for fun, then the first thing is, are we eating the right foods for to fuel the, the activity that we want to do? Right. Are we able to move ourselves? And then from there, just like the pyramid shows, you know, we work our way up from there and we build a routine that supports that lifestyle. Right. That's now, if great. you're a competitive athlete like yourself, yep. your goal is to go beyond that. So to take that fitness side and continue to push towards the end range of that. So what difference is, let's say for my, our average athlete, eating a healthy diet, getting yep. enough sleep, moving their body enough, but enough to recover also so we can be you know, high performing, yep. which for most people can be done in an hour a day. Right. You know, most days of the week, a couple of days of recovery to, to let the body heal. Yep. And you can reach those goals. Exactly. Now yeah. on the other end of that, yeah. what does that look like? Yeah, that's huge. You know, our athletes that come in fit stop every single day are doing, and I heard Javi mention in the class today, they've already done so much more in their day than people that did not come mm -hmm. and aren't working out. So just know, you showing up, you're already setting yourself up for success. Yeah. If uh, someone's looking to go more competitive, even if it's just RX competitions around town, it still requires a little bit of a lifetime, life, lifestyle switch, mm -hmm. a little, little turn of the dial. Mm -hmm. It's more that competitive side. The things that I do outside of my two to three hours of training, which is what everybody sees on Instagram and, and sees in the gym, are all based around how do I recover fast enough to get to the next day of training? Mm -hmm. How do I maximize my 20 other hours of the day to prepare myself for those three hour windows of training every single day? Um, and what that looks like, and everybody knows these, right? The golden rules, like fuel your body with the right stuff. Get enough sleep, which is huge and drink a ton of fluid. Yeah. And if doing those three basic things, if I'm successful at those three things, I know that the next day I show up to the gym, my body's gonna be ready to go no matter how sore or tired I am from the next from the day before. Yeah. If you look at CrossFit's evolution of what you'll notice is that the training, you know, the style of training hasn't evolved a ton. Right. But performance has evolved a ton. At CrossFit HQ, mm -hmm. uh, uh, back in 09, 10. The snatch. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. That's and then what they would do, they would they were drinking Coors Lights. Oh, at the competition. Yeah, the in games, between yeah, events, in events right? because they needed to carve up. Yeah. So yeah. to them, it was an easy liquid to right. get in. We don't do that anymore. Correct. But the other thing too is, you know, you'll see retest in events at the games. Yes. And yes. So like huge. 2018, they did a snatch retest. Yep. Or the girl that won in 2018 would have placed second in the men's division yeah. 10 years before. Now, has have we evolved as a species that fast? No. Has training gotten so much markedly different? No. But what has gotten different? The focus on everything outside of that, the recovery right. side of it. Right. And, and so that recovery piece is so important. You know, we say recovery, you know, people a lot of times will think like, okay, eat, sleep, drink water, like right. you mentioned, right? For sure, those are the three basics, yep. But beyond that, there's right. something that CrossFit also provides that is, that is highly beneficial in that recovery and that's the mental piece of yeah. it. beautiful cycle where your CrossFit community provides that support which yeah. gives you that that endorphin that that high that oxytocin boost that gets you feeling good yeah which then makes you want to work out harder which then gives you another boost yeah. and so you get into this cycle of the community provides that mental health that gives us the ability to do the physical health yeah, mental is, I mean, the biggest aspect of not just CrossFit workouts, because what we do is hard, right? Not even from a competitive standpoint, just showing up. Um, but it's so huge outside of the gym too. And I think becoming a confident athlete inside the gym and surrounding yourself with people that are pushing you and motivating you and, and giving you healthy thoughts, if you take that outside of the gym, then that lifestyle part, it, it honestly becomes easier. Yeah because you're just enjoying life more. Yeah. And there's a lot to be said about a community that's raising you up in a gym and bringing that outside of the gym and inputting that and implementing that into your lifestyle outside of the gym. And I, I would in, I would really implore people that, that are doing CrossFit that haven't really taken that community aspect as serious as yeah. the workouts and would, would say, hey, you know, really tap into that group 
You yeah. know, I mean, for those that you come to the same class now and you see some familiar yeah. faces, you know, you see the people that you're used to training with, connect with that group because those are the people that when you miss a day, you're going to be like, hey, where were you at? Exactly. You know, yeah. where where you been? They're, they're yeah. that accountability partner yeah. that, you know, that you and I were at one point yeah. before our, our little divergence. But if you view this as a tough workout and that's it, you're missing so much. Yeah. If your goals are to use it as an avenue for health, which is what it primarily is made for most people, right. then have you know a sit down either with a coach or yourself, yeah. do some yeah. research on how can I maximize that? Yeah. And then if your goals are bigger than that, understand that your steps to get there have to be bigger. Than that. Yeah, and, and you know, bigger goals for competitive athletes from a competitive standpoint, it takes a lot of there's a lot of sacrifices that have to be made, you know, outside of outside of the gym. The gym is the fun part. Mm -hmm. the, the crappy part is, you know, staying home Friday night. Yeah. Because you gotta train at six AM in the morning. And if that's not something that you're willing to give up, that is totally fine. Mm -hmm. But make sure that your goals at whatever level athlete you become are again oriented that lifestyle is oriented around those, that, that athlete you want to become so if you want to go have some beers with the boys on saturday nobody's stopping you yeah right but just know that in the gym if you're not seeing results like you want to be seeing that's when we do need to take a step back and think okay what am i doing outside of the gym that's hindering my performance inside the gym for sure a big piece of that is balance too exactly you know if that's you're if, if, balance, if, right? if yeah you know julia child says everything in moderation including right. moderation if you are using crossfit as as your your outlet for health and, and health expression yeah part of that health is having fun yeah you know exactly that's and, a mental thing too and if you if you are um if you're setting yourself up to train like a competitive athlete mm -hmm. but you don't have aspirations of actually competing mm -hmm. i think you can create a detriment where you you, yeah. you end up burning out was, for no reason that's it that's where burnout starts and that's why we have to have goals whether that's competing in your first competition or competing, you know, seasonally, open uh, quarterfinals, things like that, or competing with yourself and yeah. leveling up with level nine. Yeah, when you don't have goals, then this just becomes a chore, and then that's where burnout happens, and then that's where you start, like you mentioned earlier, skipping a day, then we're skipping two days, Gym and then I haven't been in the gym in a month. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that's accountability. Yeah. That's where you need community. So it all comes back full circle. That's why I came to FitStop. I was burnt out because I didn't have community, you know, I train alone, mm -hmm. but it's so good to be around people yeah. and just hear voices Absolutely. and every now and then hear, you know, go Pearson, boom, that's why I'm here. Yeah. That's why we do what we do. I think the first goal of goal setting is to set the goal of setting goals. So yeah. people say, okay, I'm gonna sit down and set my goals. When are you gonna do it? What's yeah. your deadline, yeah. right? What, you what is your deadline? How many goals do you wanna set? Yeah. And then set a date for you to sit down and write your goals, yep. right? First goal is set a goal to set goals. Yep. Then from there, start with very simple, you know, low hanging fruit. Yeah. You know, your short term, medium term, long term, very easy way, yep. right? And then have what, you know, they call it the BHAG goal, the big, yep. hairy, audacious goal. Yep. What I would suggest is start with your biggest and work your way and back exactly. so that your smaller exactly. build your big, right? Yep. So you say your big, hairy, audacious goal is maybe you're like, oh, maybe I'm on the fence about, you know, about yeah. com competition. Yeah. Or maybe I've never done Murph and I wanna, I wanna do Murph and yeah. I, wanna, I wanna get yeah. time, right? That's huge. So your big, hairy, audacious goal. Then you have your big goal, mm -hmm. which is, okay, big goal is commit to doing Murph. Right, there you're you gonna, go. You're gonna, you're gonna sign up for the class. So your big, hairy, audacious goal, complete Murph. There you go. Big goal, actually sign up for it, yep. right? Yep. Then your medium goal is, well, I gotta start doing you know, efforts towards that. Towards it, right? Specific things towards. Right, and then you say, okay, well, if I want to have a good, if I want to, if I want to be, you know, ready for it, yeah. I gotta have, you know, gotta have enough experience by a month before and yeah. feel confident, right? So you set a time. Then your small goal is, okay, well, do I have a push up? Yeah. Yes. Do I have a pull up? Maybe. Do I have air squats? Yes. Can I run a mile? Maybe. Mm -hmm. Right. So then you say, okay, well, my small goals are, I need to make sure I get these skills, and then I need to have these skills confident to then do some run throughs or some practice rounds by my date that I said here. So what date do I need to have that? Something to that effect where each of your goals has a time, yep, time, a time, time that you're going to do it clearly defined because you know, it's like, I want to lose weight. Yeah. Cool. Everybody right. wants to lose weight. Mm -hmm. I want to lose 10 pounds in the next 90 days. Right. There you go. That's, time that is a powerful goal. Mm -hmm. 
Yep. So I think even at the small level, each goal needs to be powerful yeah. and have a set point that you're going to achieve and be okay if you don't yeah. hit it. Yeah. Because every one of these goals that you're shooting for, whether you hit it or not, you're going to improve. Right. Right. I love that. Yeah, goals are so big. The goals are so big in training, outside the gym, inside the gym. Um, and if we don't have goals again, that's where burnout happens. Um, and you need goals. And yeah. You know, I want to. I want to feel successful. So when you think about, let's say, three points, action steps okay. that people can take, like starting, say, this week. Yeah. Three action steps to better understand your your lifestyle and CrossFit yeah. goals and how yeah. how they merge together. Yeah. So first, understand what kind of athlete you are. Understand uh, uh, again what what uh, what goals you have as an athlete for yourself, whether that's competitively or just show up. Okay, so understand what kind of athlete you are. Then let's take a step outside of the gym and look at your lifestyle, and you have to you have to determine and what am I what I'm doing in my lifestyle every day is that helping me towards the goals I want to reach, and you need to maybe take a step take a step back from something if you're comfortable with that life. Then you need to make sure that your expectations in the gym are as that with that lifestyle mm -hmm. right so understand what kind of athlete you are slash want to be or become take a step back and look at outside the gym and look at that lifestyle mm -hmm. and then go, go talk to go talk to somebody go talk to a coach find an accountability partner be open and honest about your goals and your lifestyle with that person and that's what's going to keep you on track you can't do it alone set your goals do some self-analysis and find somebody to, to be your accountability partner on the journey. We can be that. We can be that for them. I'd love to be that. Yeah. You're yeah. that for me. You're that for me. <laughs> All right, guys. Appreciate you joining us for this Sonic Talk. If you have questions or concerns, or if you're looking for help with specific goals or with accountability, reach out to us. We're here to help you guys. We're here to serve you guys. And uh, we look forward to seeing you on the next one.